Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. What would you say is the most effective way to perform your exercises for maximum muscle growth? Many people train with a full range of motion, where with any given exercise, they move through the largest distance they can. But is this actually optimal or essential? It is possible to use a partial at short muscle lengths, where you move through the half where the muscle is at a shorter length, or a partial at long lengths where you move through the half where the muscle is at a longer length. Are these any better? Well, the scientific literature tends to find that partials at short lengths aren't as effective as a full range of motion or partials at long lengths. And when comparing a full range of motion to partials at long lengths, we fascinatingly have three studies suggesting partials at long lengths built more overall muscle. However, these studies were done on untrained individuals. I'm thrilled to say we finally have the first study in trained individuals comparing a full range of motion to partials at long lengths. Let's dive straight in. Twenty-five trained individuals with an average of 4.9 years of experience were recruited. Here are some real-life photos of some of the subjects. They trained these exercises twice per week for eight weeks. One side of their body trained with a full range of motion on all exercises, while the other side of their body trained with a partial at long lengths on all exercises. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but the design of having one side of the body train in one way and the other side of the body train in another way is fantastic, as it means the same subjects were in both conditions. Thus, differences in genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors are much less likely to confound the results. After all, the left side of your body hopefully doesn't sleep more or eat more protein than the other side. Both sides train to momentary failure with a defined range of motion. Muscle thickness of both the elbow flexors and triceps was measured at 45 and 55% of the humeral bone length. It was ultimately found growth at all regions was similar between both types of training. Thus, partials at long lengths weren't any better than a full range of motion, but it wasn't any worse which I believe is still a very impressive finding. It was once thought that using a full range of motion to achieve both the stretch and peak contraction was essential, but these findings demonstrate partials at long lengths might be an appropriate alternative. It seems that the peak squeeze achieved by a full range of motion may not deliver additional gains. Having said this, there are some crucial things we need to keep in mind, but before detailing that, I feel something is worth mentioning. As the authors allude to, these results are great as you have the flexibility to train according to your preference. If you follow the House of Hypertrophy for a while, you'll know that there are many different training styles and roads to a great physique. It's pretty hard to do something that will seriously hurt your gains. These results yet again remind us that we shouldn't forget about the basics. Training hard enough with enough volume and consistency are foundational. As mentioned, there are still some crucial things to keep in mind. Firstly, science is an ongoing process. As the spirit of scientific accuracy will tell you, the results are specific to all the variables used, such as the exercises and the techniques used. One study isn't enough to definitively prove anything, so this isn't the final word on long length partials. Secondly, remember that elbow flexor and triceps thickness was measured at 45 and 55% regions. But what about other muscles like the chest and lats? We also know muscles do not necessarily grow identically across their regions. And if you've seen our previous video, you may be aware that partials at long lengths can be highly effective for growing the distal regions of a muscle. That is, the region of a muscle further away from its origin. For example, this paper in untrained individuals compared preacher curls with a partial at short to long lengths. Growth at the 50% region was actually similar between both, while growth at the 70% region was much better with the partials at long lengths. Similarly, this paper on untrained individuals involves comparing leg extensions with a partial at long lengths to a full range of motion. Vastus lateralis growth tended to be similar at the 40-50% to regions, but fairly better for the partials at long lengths at the 70% region. Growth of the rectus femoris tended to be better for the partials at long lengths across all regions, but the differences were large at the 70% region. Accordingly, we can't be certain distal region growth of the elbow flexors and triceps was identical between both. Hopefully future studies can shed more light onto this. Thirdly, the latest study used multiple exercises, but we can't rule out the possibility that long-length partials work better with some exercises and not others. 
One possibility is that lengthened partials are most effective with exercises that are hardest at the shortest, more contracted position. For example, both calf raises and leg extensions tend to be hardest at the top shortened position. Two studies on these exercises, although conducted on untrained individuals, found that long length partials produced more overall growth than a full range of motion. A few exercises in this latest study on trained individuals are hardest around the mid position, which might mean long length partials aren't any better than a full range of motion. Hopefully future studies examine this idea more. Remember these results are specific to a range of motion with an exercise. I don't believe we can extrapolate these results to comparing different exercises. For example, we've seen that changing joint positions to train certain muscles at longer lengths builds more muscle, such as how in untrained individuals, seated leg curls built more muscle than lying leg curls, overhead extensions built more muscle than pushdowns, leading back leg extensions built more muscle than normal leg extensions, and incline curls built more muscle than preacher curls. Some might be tempted to take the results of this latest study and say that training at longer muscle lengths in all cases isn't going to build more muscle in experienced lifters. However, remember in this latest study, both ranges of motions reached the same maximum muscle length. The only difference was the long length partials didn't attain shorter lengths. Conversely, with these exercise comparisons, we're comparing reaching longer muscle lengths to shorter lengths, which is different and may still be better for building muscle in trained individuals. Indeed, although this isn't direct muscle hypertrophy, we've seen that in bodybuilders, leaning back on the leg extension resulted in greater overall rectus morse activity than normal leg extensions. However, there may be a threshold of the length needed to maximize hypertrophy. That is, even longer isn't always better. I say this as lying down on the leg extension, which stretches the rectus femoris even more, although still producing better activity than normal leg extensions, wasn't any more effective than the leaning back leg extensions. Also, there's a study coming soon that seems to have found when tension was highest at the start of the curl, cable curls with the shoulder neutral were similarly effective to having the shoulder extended. We'll be sure to update you at the House of Hypertrophy with any new studies that may shape and refine our thoughts, but here are our current recommendations. Don't forget the basics. Training hard with enough volume and consistency are indispensable. It's still recommended to select exercises that train muscles at longer lengths over shorter lengths, and we have and are working on guides that go into detail on how you may do this with each muscle. As for range of motion, the latest data suggests you have flexibility with both long length partials and full range of motion as options on the table. Feel free to experiment around and establish what best suits you. If you're searching for further guidance about training, the high quality Alpha Progression app has all the features any lifter needs in one place. It's flawlessly crafted to help you stay motivated and consistent with effective training to achieve your desired physique and strength levels. The app can remove confusion and generate a program 100% customized to your desires in one minute or less. Let it know the equipment you have and how much time you have available to commit to training. If you have certain muscles you like to focus on more or less, the app can accommodate for this too. There's more than a quadrillion input combinations on which your plan will be based on, and the training philosophy is inspired by the latest meta-analyses and reviews. With the touch of a few buttons, you can personalize things even further if you like. You can switch out exercises, change the rep numbers, or add or decrease sets depending on how you feel. The latest update provides you with unlockable achievements to reward your effort and help sustain motivation to help you reach your ambitions. Invaluable time is also saved as the app automatically generates graphs tracking your long-term progression. The link in the comments and description unlocks two weeks free of trying out all the premium features of the app. And if you like it and choose to go further, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. I genuinely believe the app is phenomenal, with the numerous reviews speaking to this. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Feel free to check out the Alpha Progression app or another one of the videos at the House of Hypertrophy.